President Bloom, members of the platform party, guests, friends, family, and graduates. This is a very special day for you, and I'm honored to be part of the celebration. It's important to mark this milestone in your career, and milestones in general are something you should think about and adhere to. Milestones tell you where you've been, where you are, and most of all, they help you guide you in the trajectory on which you're about to embark. But I don't have to tell you, things are changing for you. You're leaving a structured environment and entering a world that is malleable, fluid, changing, uncertain, unfair, and wonderful. And all of that provides opportunities for you. Disruptive events, disruptive technologies will continually stun you. It's not going to be business as usual. As you emerge from this institution with your tools, your skills, and your dreams. You've met all of the requirements to graduate from this institution. And basically, you've acquired structured knowledge, silos of information, and worldviews. Well, now it's time to change all that. My talk today is entitled Breaking Barriers. And the basic message is that disruption is acceptable and very often desirable. By breaking through structures and boundaries, you open up unexplored spaces that you haven't thought about before. The white space between disciplines and thereby remove the constraints that you've grown up with and think about as you move through a very structured environment as you have now. You're at a stage of your life where you have to think about breaking through those structures. And today I'm going to describe seven boundaries I recommend you try to break. First, the boundary of time. This is not a nine to five job world you're entering. It's 24 by 7, 168 hour work week commitment. You should be thinking about science and engineering all the time. When you're chatting with your friends, when you're speaking with your spouse, when you're shopping, and when you're sleeping, and especially when you're showering. Don't let it leave your mind. Let it work and continue to generate ideas and new directions. A second issue about breaking the boundary of time. You have been the beneficiary of 4,000 years of the gems of the world's civilization. They've been handed to you since you were in elementary school on a silver platter. His Maxwell's equations, his differential equations, his aerodynamics, his genetics, his all the wonderful information theory, algorithms. Here they are, free. And we led you to believe that these were easily accomplished major results. But we lied to you. They were not easy at all. The folks who generated those breakthroughs did it with great sweat and failure and restart and try again and determination. So let me reassure you that when you try to move the boundary, it will be tough. You won't believe me until you've tried it, because you'll be able to break through if you remain there. But it is tough. Make no mistake about it. It's hard to move that needle. Second boundary, the boundary of geography. The world is flat. Tom Friedman told us that. Everything is connected to everything else. Geography is fast dissolving. So don't let that be a constraint in your way. The third is the boundary of discipline. You're all organized now by electrical engineering, computer science, civil engineering, chemical engineering, aeronautics. Those are disciplines in which you identify yourself. Well, break through that. Think about the interdisciplinary spaces, those unexplored spaces I've mentioned before. That's where you're going to find the interesting information. Things like biology and engineering, like electrical and computer science, like transportation and environment, 
materials and manufacturing, energy and civil engineering. It's in those spaces between where the unexplored work remains for you to contribute. The next boundary, the boundary of predictable technology. You've all grown up with the internet and you've watched it evolve. And it's not hard to predict what the infrastructure of the internet will be as we move forward. It'll contain mobility, internet of things, wireless, a variety of things you could foresee. But what we can't predict are the applications and services that have come about. We've seen a constant stream of surprising applications that hit us in the side of the head, surprised us, exploded, and dominated our thinking. Let me give you some examples. Email, nobody saw it coming. The World Wide Web, Google, peer-to-peer -peer file sharing networks, YouTube, Facebook, blogs, Instagram, Snapchat. Nobody saw them coming, and when they came, they took over. So what we've created in terms of applications and services is a system that will constantly shock us with surprises. How wonderful that is. Therein lies your opportunity to invent and create and offer your own services. The fifth boundary, the boundary of self-limitation. The byline here is reach beyond your grasp and I'm gonna give you a personal story there. When I was a young man in the Boy Scouts, I reached a certain stage and my scoutmaster challenged me, he dared me to become the first Eagle Scout in our troop. Now this was clearly beyond my grasp. I couldn't quite see how to get there. It was gonna take a lot of work and a lot of uncertainty. Well, I took the challenge, I got the Eagle Scout, and by doing so, I recognized that I could achieve if I tried hard enough. Don't underestimate your abilities, because once you get that first success, it'll give you the confidence to achieve yet many more successes along the way. Sixth boundary, the boundary of peer pressure to which you've been subject your entire life. My advice to you is don't follow the pack. Break out into new territory. And again, I'm going to give you a personal story here. When I got my master's degree at MIT, as you heard, I was done. I had a child, I was married, ready to take a job at MIT doing research. And my supervisor said, you've got to get a PhD. And I said, I don't want one. You've got to get it. So I said, okay, I'll agree on two conditions that I set for myself. Condition number one, I'm going to work for the absolutely best professor that I know of at MIT. And secondly, whatever I do, I want to have impact. I want it to make a difference. I don't want to piddle around for three or four years making a small nothing. Well, the professor I, choose, I chose, a gentleman named Claude Shannon. And if you don't recognize that name, tonight go on Google and find out who he was and what he did. He's considered the father of the information revolution. A brilliant man. So I started to work with him. And then I looked around at my classmates. And all of them were working on the kind of work that he had done. He had developed information theory and coding theory, and he had established the fundamental principles of that field. All my classmates were working on remaining small problems that were hard and probably of little significance. And I said, that's not what I signed up for. Meanwhile, I was surrounded by computers at MIT, and I said, you know, someday they're going to have to talk with each other. And there was no adequate technology to allow that to happen. Now, here was a problem which was unexplored, would have impact if I could solve it, and I had an approach. That was for me. And so I set out doing something none of my other classmates were interested in, and I broke through and I was able to accomplish some of the things you heard about today. So the point is, don't follow the pack. Break that boundary. So the seventh boundary, the boundary of your own internal constraints. A wake-up call is a really good thing if you respond to it correctly. Another personal story. When I first got to MIT, I had come here from CCNY just across the river, 
with a rather limited study habits. I, I, I take a piece of paper like this with the basic num equations and study on the subway as I went that back and forth to work. I went to evening session at CCNY. And I scored very high at, at CCNY. I got to MIT. MIT is an intimidating place. The physical structure, the students, the faculty. And I figured I'll sail right through this. The first course I took was a course in which they told me they would separate the men from the boys. Midterm comes along, and I get a 50. 50. I'd seen nothing south of 94 my entire career. And I realized something was wrong. I had two choices now. Go in the corner and cry and give up and go home, or figure out what's wrong. What can I do to correct this? And I realized I did have to do more than just studying on a piece of paper, really dedicated myself, got an A in the course, and basically went on to do the kind of thing I did. Again, how you respond to a wake-up call, a valuable wake-up call, is critical. Don't crush, just move ahead. So, those are the seven boundaries I wanted to mention to you. The boundary of time, geography, discipline, predictable technology, self-limitation, peer pressure, and removing internal constraints. Now, the opportunities in front of you are incredible. The internet has given you, this younger generation, a system that you can't imagine living without. You share your photos, you have to do that all the time, streaming video, shopping online, chat with your friends. But as we move ahead and accept all of this, you have to wonder, where did it all come from? What can we learn from the past about these wonders at our, at our hands? So again, another story. Story is, there's an elderly gentleman sitting in the bleachers watching a ball game. And sitting next to him is a millennial, one of you, also watching the game. And the game goes on, and every so often, the young man looks at the old man, and finally he says, excuse me, sir, I have no way to relate to you. When you were a young man, there was no television, there were no computers, there was no internet, no smartphones, no Facebook. I don't know how to relate to you. And the old man looks at him and he says, you know, son, you're right. We didn't have those things. So we had to invent them. What the heck are you going to do for the next generation? You. What are you going to do for the next generation? Think about it. So, and it's your opportunity. So it's not the journey, as you know, it's the destination that will delight you. I remember the engagement and the striving that took me as a, from a poor kid in Manhattan to this podium, and it was a great ride. So make your journey fulfilling, make it fun. Be absolutely, be sure to select a job in life that you're going to enjoy. They'll never pay you enough to take work that you don't like. And you shouldn't be working on anything that you don't care about. Do something you really care about, and you shouldn't be working on anything else. You're in charge of what you do from here on out. You make the rules, you choose the path, you have the responsibility to lead yourself. There's no script to follow, that's gone. There's no curriculum to follow, it's your own curriculum. You are your main competitor and you are your own final judge. Don't look around, judge yourself. You're gonna make the choices, you'll experience the adventures, you'll suffer the consequences, and you'll reap the rewards. It offers you unanticipated choices that will come your way. Keep your eyes open, change your path, when the opportunity arises. Don't set a fixed path. Keep your eyes open and your mind available. The game's just begun, and there's lots of folks before you who succeeded. And remember another thing, failure's okay, as long as you get up and try again. In fact, if you're not failing occasionally, you're probably not trying hard enough. Just get up, pick yourself up, and do it again. And most of all, have confidence in yourself and believe that you can achieve. So finally, I urge you to find the surprises that appear when you break down those boundaries. Thank you for your attention.